How's everybody doing today? Uh, whew, man. What is up, Ty? Give me one if you can hear me. Let's see. Let me get our stuff set up. Share the screen. Still getting used to my new setup, but it's coming along. What's up, Nada? How you doing? Give me one if you can hear me. Thank you. Oh, trying to get motivated, man. <laughs> I've been struggling lately. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you know how we do it. If you got a, a security question or question in general, just throw it in the chat. I'll get to it. Um, I do a lot of IRS work, so I thought it'd be appropriate to kind of go through um, the safeguards for some of the IRS checks because people are going to be trying to ball out with their, <laughs> their refund. I, I don't want it to get cyber stolen out here, so uh, I'm pretty good. Like I said, just a little old, but I'm making it. I'm making it. I'm making it. Um, like I said, we're going to uh, flow through these. Like I said, I do a What's up, JM? I do a, a lot of work for the um, the IRS and with the IRS, so it's all good. It's a hacker season right now. Facts. <laughs> it's the hacker season. Everybody's trying to ball out. <laughs> uh, hopefully too many people don't get in trouble with the PPP loans. So I see a lot of people talking about those, those PPP loans, so. Uh, yeah, uh, Ty, check out that uh, uh, digital forensics. Uh, the um the ending was was good me and gabe really chopped it up i was really glad he um came on here so we're gonna uh start doing a lot of more stuff together he's getting his channel together so of course i'll be over there so um i'm gonna do a blue team versus red team so uh me and him's gonna do a tabletop which is basically a aws architectural diagram and he's just gonna walk through hollywood with attacking on paper before I actually build and he attack it in real life. So we do a tabletop, which is common in um, uh, government and federal um, organizations where you just do it on paper first. Then the tax refund act is ready in December. Oh yeah, I actually do a lot of work with the um, Department of Revenues, which takes take state taxes. I do a lot of work with federal and people don't realize is the hackers try to apply for your refund before you apply. We're we'll talk about that in my slides. A lot of time. You might do a refund and it might be gone already too, right? Then, uh, you know, we always talk about the gender war, which I don't touch, but sometimes, you know, couples are arguing and somebody I take the kids, <laughs> put them on their tax return without telling the other per per person, right? So we're going to go over that too, what that looks like. So yeah, uh, this is hacker season, man. Get those refunds before the people do. Gabe is a walking psychic of people. That was a good lie. I appreciate that, JM. I thought that was an excellent lie. Once again, uh, we're doing that red team, blue team. So I'm working on my AWS architecture. We're going to do a tabletop walkthrough, how he would attack it in, and how how I would protect his attack, right? If he's going to attack me on Active Directory, right, I got uh, multi-factor authentication. I got a... Uh, uh, differentiating subnets i have a um, subnet firewall and actually a session firewall on the individual devices so so i think that's going to be interesting yeah jay um gabe is on this stuff and and i and i like to uh partner with guys like that that's on this stuff but let's go ahead and uh see how the hackers going to try to get you and how you can protect yourself uh, from um your federal and your state return All right so So this was a scam uh just happened um three or four months ago it was actually with your uh, tax preparer right a lot of people go get their tax prepared uh professionally so the hackers was actually attacking those guys to get to your return right i actually did a video on it so if you reach in there you will see it uh internal irs revenue has warned u.s tax professionals of identity thieves actively targeting them in a series of fiction attack attempting to steal their electronic filing identification numbers. Scammers started this ongoing phishing campaign right before the U.S. tax season with the end goal of stealing both the client data and the tax preparer identities. The phishing email asks tax preparers to email copies of the e-file e identification number verification 
and a drive license to a bear, to a bogus verification process, right? So if you're H and R Block, um, Tax Slayer, uh, Intuit, right? These hacks are actually going to them to try to steal your information, right? Sometimes the attacker doesn't steal it from you; they steal it from somebody you trust, right? So, um, like I said, I did a video on that earlier, which I thought that I never thought of them actually. <laughs> attacking the preparer to get to you right so that was that was interesting so so if you go out the website there's a ton of slides so i kind of compiled them all from the irs website and a couple other websites right so uh tax related identity theft occurs when someone uses your stolen personal information including your social security number to file a tax return claiming it a, a to to file a tax return claiming a fraudulent return right so i see that a lot uh the hackers come in first so they trying to get you in the first month of tax season why you haven't got your tax return yet right so they're trying to beat you to your own tax return right so that's <laughs> just not interesting but like i said that's, that's just common so let's talk to talk about the signs of identity theft and what that what that actually looks like right uh you may not know your victim identity theft until you notify by the IRS to a possible issue with your return, right? So the cool thing is about uh, state tax and the federal taxes, they have things in, in place to try to catch hackers from stealing your information, right? That's the cool thing. They're spending billions and millions of dollars on that, right? Some of that's fraud. Some of that's coming from illegitimate IP. Some of that's coming from illegitimate countries trying to come in and steal your tax return right so they do have a lot of sophistication and paying a lot of monies to uh, to block that right be alert to possible tax related identity theft if you get a letter from the irs inquiring about a suspicious tax return that you did not file right once again when you go uh get your refund they might ask you questions the reason why they're asking questions is to make sure it's you Right. You knew where you lived 10 years ago. You know who your current bank is. Right. So they have questions they can ask you before they give you a refund or before they give you a refund to a hacker. Right. So all that's, you know, in there. You can't e-file your tax return because of a duplicate Social Security number. You get a tax script in an email that you did not request. You get an IRS notice that an online account is being created in your name. You get an IRS notice that your existing online account has been accessed or disabled when you took no action. You get an IRS notice that you owe additional taxes or refund offset that you have collection actions taken against you for a year that you did not file a tax return, right? So people file fake returns and fake money, right? And you're a company to try to get a bigger tax. Now you're responsible for it, right? There are, you get an IRS notice that you owe additional tax offset. IRS records indicate you receive wages or other income from an employer you did not work for. You've been assigned an employer identification number, but you did not request an EIN, right? So a lot of things hackers will request to try to impersonate you, right? And a lot of times they can get it, right? But we're doing better with MFA and, and more stuff, but still there's a lot of older people who don't understand the... Uh, technical ways of uh, taxes and refunds. So either they get tricked or somebody files a return in their name or file a return in their business, right? So you see people doing uh, fake business filings a lot too. So so what about tax-related identity theft? So that's the big part is steal your money or steal your identity so I can get your money, right? So a lot of times um, hackers um, identity theft. That's probably the number one goal because then they can get, uh, go get your tax refund, get into your bank account. I've actually seen people take out a equity loan and people houses and take all the equity out their house because that's something you wouldn't think a normal hacker would do. Right. So you're not checking the equity in your house to see if somebody took an equity loan. When do you know uh, when you late on payments and the bank contacts you? Right. Because they don't change your number, your address to a different address. Right. So now all those records are going to somewhere else. So when you go in the bank and the teller says, oh, you're behind on some payments, you're like, what payment? Then they stole, you know, your home equity, right? But let's just, let's focus on the tax return. If your social security number is compromised and you know a suspect or a victim of tax-related uh, identity theft, the IRS recommends you do these actions. 
uh, respond immediately to the IRS notice, call the number provided, right? The IRS, make sure if somebody calls you, even if it comes up the IRS, do not call it and hang up and look up the IRS number and actually call the IRS because people can spoof numbers and, and do other things. So it looks like the IRS is calling you, but it's not, right? If it is, just hang up and call them back. <clears throat> if your e-file return is rejected because of a duplicate uh, filing under your social security number, the IRS instructs you to, to complete uh, form 1439, identity theft affidavit. Use a fillable fillable form at IRS.gov. Print the attachment out for your return and mail your return according to these instructions. Uh, there's an identity theft.gov for steps you should take uh, right away to protect yourself and your financial accounts. If you previously contacted the IRS and did not uh, have a resolution, there's a specialized assistant number, right? They have teams standing by to help you, but I always make sure you call them, right? And uh, don't let them call you. And nine times out of 10, they don't call you, right? They expect you to call them. So somebody did a fraudulent return on you, right? If you believe someone has filed a fraudulent return on your number, you can get a copy of that return, certain things with dependents. If you file your tax return and get a message telling you that the, the that the dependents on your return have been claimed on another taxes, uh, a return of their own, you can, uh, if you receive notice 6 CP87, you need to find out why someone else claims your dependents, right? And then, which is, which is, could be hackers, could be family members, could, you know, you arguing with your ex, but you know that's the type of uh maybe not a cybersecurity attack but a cybersecurity issue right <laughs> two people aren't on the same page right if the hackers steal the money by hacking the tax company like HR block does the tax companies re take responsibilities and give you the money back uh yeah they should jams uh that's why when you do i will go to the big boys right they're gonna charge you a little more but if you have any issues they're gonna make you whole there's a lot of small small tax return guys that i probably wouldn't mess with but if one of the big guys are, are attacked um i'm pretty sure they will they will refund your money um data breach not all data breaches or computer hacks result in tax related identity thefts it's important you know what type of personal information is stolen if you have been a victim of a data breach keep in touch with the company to learn uh, what is it doing to protect you and follow the steps of victim identity theft? That it brings victim should uh, submit form 14039. It's an identity theft affidavit. Only if your security number has been compromised and your e-file return was rejected as a duplicate. There are instructions you to file this form, right? So, JM, you you know what's happening a lot when they got a form out there for it, right? If you've been in an uh, identity breach, fill out form 14039. So that lets you know it's been happening a little more than uh, uh, than it should if they have a form for it, right? But once again, it's the IRS season. We're just going over things to look out for. Or if they do happen, what's the form and how do you need to proceed, right? So hopefully this doesn't happen to anybody. But once again, this is cybersecurity. Uh, like I said, I, it's, and we'll see it at the end. Um, the IRS actually has computer security compliance that companies and vendors need to do we'll talk about that uh a little but mostly this is for uh common users uh consumers using the irs and what should they do you know if they're attacked or uh, hacked is it safer to do taxes online or go to the actual office i've been debating that <laughs> jm i think it's okay to go online um to be honest i've just actually downloaded software um, I think my computer is more secure than their online um, uh, filing. So I, I, I think I'm actually file online. Um, I think online is better than the actual office because if you Google it, a lot of tax returns, people, they were, turning it, they were throwing away tax returns in regular trash. They wouldn't shred it or nothing, Jay. People were finding tax returns because a lot of those are in, in miles now because, you know, miles are begging for work. So they were throwing them away in regular bins. What's up, Gabe? Bay? So um, from a cybersecurity perspective, I probably would do it online. Um, I think that's uh, probably more secure than going actually going in the office. Because uh, when you go in the office, the, if it's a local, especially if it's a pop-up office, um, they don't have a lot of security on the laptops. They probably don't have the proper security in the network. 
um, I see people going to those tax returns in the mall. So I'll let Gay Bay chime in on that. I, I don't I don't think you got top notch security in the mall when you file your taxes. So um so uh, like I said, I think I would do it online more, JM. Uh, When a question, how safe is a VPN? Does a VPN actually tunnel every single day and keep it use a hundred undetected a hundred percent? Um, I think a VPN is just uh one layer of security. I don't think anything's a hundred percent. If you Google it, a lot of VPNs have been having vulnerability issues. Um I would use it. Um not not as a hundred percent, Jerry. Uh Jerry, I would put it at um probably 70%. Um um, but once again, it's just one part of security and a security on you. My tax balance. <laughs> facts, facts, Gabe. I, I'll drop the link in a minute because Gabe does more networking than me. I can't see you setting up a, a secure network in the mall and VPN back to your office and checking your search to make sure they're good. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I don't. I'm so <laughs> let's talk about employment related identity theft. And that's kind of what we've been hitting. If you believe someone is using your social security number for employment purposes, opposed to filing fraudulent tax returns for refund. Uh, if you've been assigned an employee identification number that you did not request, you should first determine if someone's acted legitimately on your behalf. A lot of times if you're hiring a, uh, if you're hiring a tax preparer, they would use your number that you give more authority to, right? To, um, to do that it's important for you to determine why the ein was to sign to you before assuming you're a victim of identity theft a third party may have requested an ein on your behalf for legitimate business purposes right but you need to be in communication with your tax preparer to make sure you understanding what they're requesting in, in your on your behalf right but i've seen that before a lot of people get poas uh power of attorneys they're filling uh taxes out for older people uh when my mom was alive um I used to uh, take her to a tax preparer, uh, POA. Uh, my attorney did, did a power attorney so the tax preparer could uh, do her taxes, right? And, uh, you know, make sure she was cool. But I knew what the third party was doing, right? If you've been signing EIN number that you did not request it, you should make legitimate half. I think I just read, oh, this one third party may um, be half for legitimate business purposes. Now, this right here is. Uh, good for anything right scams uh scams but once again it's tax season right so it's the uh way to be um <laughs> stealing in tax season they're working me today i've been <laughs> i've been a chat dweller today now i feel you i feel you oh uh, so this is for really anything but once again time phishing emails and scams those are just so common people getting calls all the time but once again a little more it's tax season, so it's probably going to be a little more focused on, on, on tax season and what's going on. Identity thieves use phishing emails to trick you into giving up your password or other information. Don't take the bait. There are several tips the Federal Trade Commission provides. You can follow to avoid phishing scams, such as not responding to emails that ask for personal financial information. Share this information with your family and friends. Please report these to the IRS, Treasury, and other tax-related suspicious online, right? Because the uh, IRS is taking those phishing emails and making them known to all the tax vendors and people using their software, right? So they're trying to block that from all the uh, email relays and, and email products, right? Especially around this time for the IRS. Please report impersonation scams, especially if you're a victim to the uh, Treasury Inspector General. You can report other suspicious email online and email phishing to phishingreport.uscert.gov, right? So that's the federal place for all of those uh, us-cert.gov, uh, right? Trying to um, block that out, get that out to community so nobody falls for those uh, phishing email scans, which which we know they will, right? Passwords, right? Hopefully, passwords be, would be obsolete, right? People be tokens, MFAs, and uh, we're going to get to that. For educational purpose, what software do hackers use to run phishing campaigns, and what 
uh, what is the most common? Uh, Jerry, that's an excellent question. If you go to um, uh, Mauer now, you can actually rent a fishing campaign as a service now, right? So there's professional um, cyber criminals that's selling it for ransomware. Uh, they run you a whole fishing campaign and you buy it like you do AWS. They rent you out about four or five servers. They give you an email template that they know are successful, right? But as a um, nation, we try to get those IPs and block them. But um, um, if you Google um, uh, ransomware as a service, RASS, or phishing as a service, um, you can just buy it as Amazon. Those those guys are good. So um, I call them, uh, like I said, phishing as a service. Those are the ones that, uh, that work, like I said, because they test those. They A-B test them. They send them out to focus groups, right? Because they're, they're a professional organization getting people to click on stuff. So you can get rats, malware, and virus on your machine, right? Ransomware, too, because they want to get in your company and lock it all up. So create a strong password that has the following simple guidelines. Use long phrases that you can remember with characters and numbers. Uh, use, a four, uh, use a different password for each account and use a password manager. Um, I go back and forth on the password managers. A lot of password managers have been hacked, right? So you got to be careful with those. When possible, do not use your email address as your login ID. Use two-factor authentication when it's offered. This is particularly important for protecting your email, financial, and social media accounts. The cool thing is most social media accounts, uh, slash shout out to YouTube, you get two-factor authentication. Um, I'm old school. I worked in the government, so I always do. If I can't do MFA, I do 14 characters, three upper, three lower, three numbers, and three uh, special characters. But I'm kind of weird like that. <laughs> so um, I remember the first time I instituted where, where I worked at, people were booing me when I walked down the aisles. Boo. <laughs> so, yeah, I came from DOD, so it's always 14 characters unless you're doing MFA, right? So I'm about that security life. <laughs> Multi-factor. If you do your own taxes using an online provider, you have options to using multi-factor authentication as another layer of protection. The IRS strongly encourages to use this option. It helps prevent identity thieves from accessing your online account with your tax provider. Generally, a multi-factor authentication allows the user to receive a security code, for example, as a text to a mobile phone. When you return a user to the product, you must enter your username, password, and a security code to complete the login process, right? And that's uh, MFA is killing it. That's going to um, probably take out 70 to 80% of your hackers, right? Um, there's people that can defeat that, right? But they're on the upper echelon of hacking, right? Most financial institutions, social media, email providers also offer multi-factor authentication options. People should opt, people should opt for multi-factor authentication whenever it's offering, right? MFA is the truth. That's it. Like I said, it's going to uh, probably handle 80% of your um, hackers. Now you're talking about the elite people, right, who's going to defeat uh, MFA. Uh, Blind got his wife. They're like, I'm thinking the password would, would stick and stay for a while because they're embedded in everything. I'm just guessing. You're, no, you're 100% right. Uh, I think we just need to add the MFA component. Uh, to where, you know, if somebody steal your username and password, if they don't steal your phone or it's called the golden SML attack for advanced uh, hackers. So, um, yeah, if you got the password in your phone, I'm in your MFA to get the code. Right. That's going to take out. A, um, that's going to take a lot of uh, your, your your hackers out until you get to the elite guys. Right. <clears throat> I use Mozilla Firefox automated create password. Oof. I, I don't like that automated. I like the automated password. Um, a lot of times you got to be careful because it saves it in your browser. So you don't have to use it. So the hacker can get in, can steal that password out of the uh, browser's cache. So as long as you're not using the browser to save your password, JM. I think you're okay, but most people who use because they're they're hard to remember, so they just save them in the browser. So as soon as a hacker gets on your machine, right, they can see that cache inside that uh, inside that browser. So 
There you go. Jerry, right on it. Jerry's on it. Jerry's on it. Facts, facts. I'm with Jerry on that. So, so JM, you can generate the password. I just wouldn't save it in the browser like Jerry. Jerry's right on it with that one. MFA saving my Outlook email. Hackers are always trying to get into my email account. Facts, facts, facts. Uh, yeah, but uh, uh, Outlook, uh, especially if you're in the O365 cloud, that's incredible security in the Office 365 cloud. Um, that's top notch. And um, so, yeah, your hackers trying to get in because if they get in your um, email, especially your personal email, um, they start sending your people, uh, you stuck, you need money to get out of jail. Uh, so, right. So if they get in their e your email, they can start impersonate you. Right? That a lot of your codes goes into your email. So they get into your email, reset your code, send it to your email, but they're in their email. So they're going to steal your code and reset it and lock you out your accounts. So, yeah, you got to be real careful. People get into your, your email because um, all your <laughs> resettings of your passwords usually go to your email. What's up, Helmet P? So I, <clears throat> Iris has in identity protection pins. I'll tax I'll taxpayers. You can verify the identities are eligible for identity pin. This six digit pin that offers additional protection for your social security numbers on your tax returns. To obtain an IP pin, use the get IP pin tool to opt into your program. If you already have an IRS account, uh, enter your username and password. If not, you must verify your identity through a rigorous secure access process. It is rigorous. They're asking you a lot of questions, but that's what we need. Review the security access requirements before you start. Yeah, because it's going to be asking you for stuff on past tax returns. For detail of the IP pin and alternatives for those who cannot authenticate online. So get an IP pin. So on the IRS uh, website, they were talking about the... Uh, 2021 does it scams uh syndicated com, uh conservation sorry conversation easement so we're going to go talk through some of the what they're saying are the top scams on the irs website is there a secure app to safely save notes like uh, my different path um that um we talked about that's what the um password generators are for right um one of the big ones just had an issue uh recently i don't use them a lot so um i'm gonna write that down and pick the best one <laughs> that i think is out there uh jm um how does a hacker gain access how does a hacker quick question jay how does a hacker gain from what does a hacker gain from a ddos attack um what a hacker gains from a DDoS attack is similar to ransomware. A lot of, uh, Christmas just passed. A lot of companies get 80% of their money during Christmas, Jerry. So if I DDoS your attack and you can't get your websites up, I'm going to hit you just like ransomware. You need to send me some Bitcoin before I can stop this DDoS attack. Right? Because um, you, I could spin up easily six, seven petabytes to hit your website with 100 VMs. You can't do business. Right, you can't spin up that many servers now. AWS is cool, they got a lot of um services that help you with that. But if that does overwhelm your website, uh, this like I said, it's the same as a ransomware attack. Ransomware is encrypted, you can't use your site. DDoS, same thing. I overload your servers, I overload your network, you can't use your website, so you got to pay me. Um, used to see it a lot more 10 years ago, but ransomware is um. The choice but i i see that i see that every now and then jerry where um uh, once again they just overwhelm your uh, website and you need to do business in a certain amount of time right so you're gonna pay the uh bitcoin similar ransomware so you can get your uh, site back up and see worker what's up yeah that's what i was talking about those external password managers i i look some up and recommend some um, let's see what's the uh, the ones out there that are, are recommended, Jerry and JM, and see which one is the the best. I'm six I'm six deep with no sleep. I feel you on that. I'm tired. I'm sleeping, but I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm old. Um, all right, then just another form of crypto mouth. Yeah, but it's not really malware because it's not touching your um, it's not touching your disk. It's just 
there's so many um bytes of information you cannot use your disk like it's encrypted it's not even in your disk it's just overwhelming your servers because when you get that many petabytes especially got we log everything so our logs are filling up our disks are filling up our cisco came route you know we just the network every you know our web servers are filling up because we logging all that stuff so now we got to cut off our logging we got deleted we got to try to block it out on the internet even if we block it out on the internet we still can't do business so what do you think of about cobalt in 2022 a lot of institutions to use it um there's still a lot of cobalt out there the problem is is um from a somebody learning it i wouldn't hire a brand new person i'll co and i know a couple cobalt guys those guys are old and gray right this is a specialized skill um some stuff uh from a transactional standpoint like doing work um irs work and certain type of work for a hospital you can't beat you can't beat a mainframe because when you batch a million subscribe a million hospital or whatever you do for irs those are just millions of batches so a mainframe is excellent about out about grinding that through from a security perspective we like it because right it's um you just log into it there's really no disk all the discs are on the mainframe it's just one box it's usually not connected to the internet um so it's usually used for internal things so for that perspective but if i was getting into the game new i wouldn't do cobalt but it's uh i've used i've done cobalt before in ooh, 1999 and 2001. uh so um those guys make a ton of money too though irs irs wraps up his 2021 dirty dozen scams in syndicated conversations easement promotes a type a take um provisions of tax law tax law for conversation easements and twisted through using uh inflated appraisals of undeveloped land and partnership this abuse arrangement has designed to game the system and generated inflated and unwarranted tax deductions often by using inflated appraisals of undivided land and partnership right so when people file this is what the irs is looking for right they see this you're going to be in an audit <laughs> audit issue right so that's one of the they call them the dirty scams of uh inflating your inflating your taxes and get a, a bigger tax return than you deserve what program language do you think is going to be big a language is not so popular it uh big a language is not so po i mean i think you're gonna have the big dogs i think you're gonna have Python still going to be good. Um, uh, Java and C sharp on the older back end. There's a ton of people. That's kind of like the new COBOL. There's still a ton of that out there. Um, if you're doing uh, machine learning, R, uh, React, uh, Angular, um, I don't program as much uh, as I used to. Uh, if you take uh, programming and go up to uh, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence that's gonna be hot oh there's my man right on time uh yeah we saying the same thing uh i just repeated what engineering cannabis type so i think those are always gonna um, be the big dogs uh jerry um and two is they've been out there and there's a ton of work for that right um i'm teaching this summer i'm teaching python probably for middle school but anybody can take it so i think that's what i'm uh, gonna shoot for this summer jerry uh, trying to teach the kids to do the uh, program, but it'd be something everybody can jump on and get with. Yeah, they make a ton of money, like any very niche area. Facts, facts. Best language to learn, C Python. Yep, become an expert. Facts, facts. So, Miss Nash in the house. Glad you can make it. Uh, if you look on my Friday live, I'm doing access to justice. I have a, a female attorney coming on. We're going to talk about access to justice, meaning how does technology, cybersecurity uh, uh, helps the population, the jail population. Uh, you don't have to go to court now. You can do it on Zoom. And if you're doing court um, at your house, what's the cybersecurity to make sure nobody's listening in on your court case? So. I'm doing that on uh, Friday at two. It's called Access to Justice. I have a attorney coming on, uh, uh, Meredith Hammer. 
we're going to chop it up about access to justice, using technology and cybersecurity to help people get a better court dates, better timing. So. That's cool, JL. When I teach you, you can come and help me, man. You can get in a, help me when I teach my uh, Python class probably this summer. What do you think about Rust and Go? Oh, those are hot. I think actually Rust got put in the, uh, I want to say the Linux kernel. They were talking about putting Rust in it. Um, I think those are some of the uh, top languages uh, that are pick, that's picking up steam. Um, I have to do a research on it. I, I've I've heard of both of them. I don't know how they're catching on with businesses and stuff like that. I would have to do a research research, but I know those are the two of the hottest language. Shout out to women in Linux. Um, they talk about those two more than I do. Uh, uh, engineering said Rust is good, good language. So yeah, like I said, I, I heard I heard that. I might try to do a little Rust. Like I said, I I keep hearing a lot about that, right? So I'm getting my environments ready inside AWS, like I said, to test them out and uh, uh, get ready for it. So those two languages I heard of, I just never use, right? Another one of the uh, dirty dozen scams and micro captive structures, promoters, accountants, and web planners persuade owners to, clo to closely held entities to participate in schemes that lack many of the attributes of insurance. For example, coverages may ensure pl implausible risks fail to match the genuine business needs or duplicate the taxpayer commercial coverage, but the premiums paid under this arrangement are often accept, excesses and used to skirt tax law. In addition, information can be found right there. Recently, the IRS has stepped up to enforcement against variations using potential abuses offshore uh, captive insurance companies uh, domiciled or created in Puerto Rico and elsewhere, right? So... I guess people are using these tax uh, advantages to uh, <laughs> take advantage of it. A lot of people call that creative taxing, right? It's not illegal. It's in the gray area. But the IRS says, no, nah, these are illegal, right? <laughs> so, hmm. It's actually, y'all, I, I will check it all out. <laughs> yeah, check it. And we, have, we invite you on the panel. Like I said, we chopping it up on it. Um, um, I, like I said on my channel, if you missed it, I did talked about what's going to be new in my channel and bigger societal issues that uh, deal with technology and computer science. And I think access to justice, um, uh, scams, um, the government uh, doing overreaching and doing mass surveillance is going to be on there. Uh, one of engineering cannabis favorite ones. How do we look into these um, AI machine learning algorithms? that make uh, real world uh, decisions on your life. Uh, I'm calling it capital redlining, uh, uh, cash bail. Instead of you paying cash bail, it does an algorithm to see if you get out, right? If the algorithm is biased, right? You can stay in jail, right? If you stay in jail, you can lose your house, you know, and everything. So those are some of the big issues. How does uh, uh, one of the authors call it WMD? weapons of math destructions right the math is the algorithm and how can it destroy your life right so those are some of the bigger things i'm, I'm gonna do on my channel so yes i, <laughs> I would check it out yeah it's two on uh if you uh just uh go in um youtube and look up my name you will see it it starts uh two on friday we might new do another one on monday uh, but yeah but definitely schedule um once again we're gonna do access to justice mm. I'm seeing me and people talk about ageism and tech. I did a go in my um, <laughs> I did I did a video on that. If you go back, that was uh, for me a popular video. I think I got like 200 views. I talked about ageism real um, for me real deep. I talked about it um, with me because I'm 53, <laughs> so I ain't got much longer left. Man, I need another 10, and I'm gonna slide out. But no, I, I talked about it, and uh, it's real. It's real. As I get older, I can see. And just long story short is as you get older you make more money right so people are gonna maybe not want to hire you and two is i'm realistic man when i was younger i stay up 12 hours with mountain dew i could bang out about five thousand lines of code man in java but i was i was the man i could do oracle pills i'd be up all night man i ain't doing that anymore helmet <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah so i talked about that i i did a, a lot of people loved it i did an ageism uh, check mine out helmet and give me a little um 
give me a little feedback in the comments on that. I did one and I, I was pretty realistic. I got a lot of good feedback because most people say when I hear people talk ageism, they talked about it at a higher level. You touched before. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, go look in my in my back of my videos or just do Professor Black Ops. And I think it's ageism. It'll come up. Um, then we can chop it up and talk about it if you got any questions about it. I try to be realistic when I do it, you know, in a real perspective. Oh, that's cool. Uh, engineering said he's done deep learning on Rust, but not deep learning on Rust, still easily deep learning on Python. So, yeah. <laughs> okay definitely was real. yeah so i try to keep it but yeah it's it's real out here man but i mean i as a guy that owned a business right it's, it's about resources right my age and my salary am i gonna give you value am i giving you value for that him i think a lot of older people don't understand that you still a resource unless you're on your company for your age and your money you got to give value for that right and there's still got to be a place where, right? Because the excess is what the business owner get from what you charge, right? So there's there's got to be uh, net and gross, right? So what are you doing to make business money, right? And what is what is the value of that? If you can get two younger guys and come out with more money, right? You're gonna get more more time, more product, and more efficiency, right? So you so you got to understand what it's like, right? So let's see this other dozen potential abuse of U.S. Malta tax treaty. Some U.S. citizens re uh, residents are relying on an interpretation of the U.S. Malta income tax treaty to take positions that they may contribute appreciated property tax free to certain Maltese pension plans that are also no longer tax sequence. I'm going to stop reading that because when you got to do interpretation on taxes, man, you about to get so right out. I, I don't do interpretation on my taxes. I don't do in a gray area, right? I don't, I'm not aggressive on my taxes because if you get out of it, the little money you made is going to get ate up, right? So I try to be really realistic about my taxes because as somebody said, I'm scared of a lot. I'm not afraid of a lot of people, but the IRS is one of them, right? Because the IRS can get you hung up, man. Um, so yeah, so I'm real uh, um, judicious about what I claim right now. I'm not want to, I don't want to give away my tax benefits, but I'm not trying to be out in the gray area tap dancing either. Right. So there's a, there's a, a, a place you need to be with that. So. While the algorithm destroys life, <laughs> I have some feeling of vitriol about that. Yeah. And uh, we're going to talk about the layer of cash bond. Um, of course, Cali's doing it first instead of you playing cash, which a lot of poor people, you can't make bail. So you're going to ride in jail. So they're trying to do an algorithm to say, OK, if you don't have money, if you have these four or five things working, the odds of you skipping bail is small. Right. Right. A lot of people plead guilty because they can't come out with the cash bail. And if they don't do something right, they could lose everything. Right. Because if you can't go to work for two or three weeks. Right. A lot of people don't have big cash savings. Right. So you, you so you, uh, like and I said, I'm going to give my man credit, uh, engineering cannabis. We need to be able to look at those algorithms and say, OK, if you in a certain area of town, just because I live in there, don't make me a thief. I'm just poor and living about area. You can't put that negatively against me. Right. So engineering cannabis, like I said, I got to give him credit because he's one of the first persons I, I heard say that. And I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense. We need to have our AI experts reviewing reviewing code like we got attorneys aclu they uh look at laws and try to make sure they're fair across the board right we need that for machine learning artificial intelligence robotics right because people don't realize this and even in uh autonomous cars autonomous cars driving i'm in the back seat i'm asleep it's my car right if somebody jumps out in front of the car right the car is taking thousands of algorithms down there so are you going to have the car swerve into the next lane there could be a truck coming right so the algorithm could say okay if i hit this person they're seven feet away they definitely gonna die if i swerve and the uh semi's coming it's gonna be a front end crash my uh passenger who is me he's got a 50 percent chance of living 
right? So should I swerve? Should I run over the person jumping? Right? We got to make those decisions. Those are programming decisions. I'm going to let our uh, uh, engineering cannabis chimes in. Those are decisions you tell a car what to do. If it's my car, I want to hit the person because I got 100% of the chance of living, right? Right? So there's the stuff you got to calculate. Because if you ever looked at our robot, Will Smith was drowning in a the car. There was another car with a girl in it. Will Smith said, say the baby, don't say me. The robot was like, no, nah, the, the child's got 30%. You had 70%, so it saved Will. So Will had nightmares about that, that he wanted the kid to be saved, right? So that stuff in real life is programmed by the artificial intelligence and the machine learning, right? So those cars are going to make those decisions, right? So we got to tell it what it want, what it needs to do. Algorithm affects three part app, life, wealth, health. <laughs> it's a facts, engineered cannabis, right there. So, what inspired your YouTube name? Oh, what inspired my YouTube name? Oh, um, I'm a professor in real life. Uh, I'm black and I do operations for security. So I just kind of put those together. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I like that. I'm a professor in real life. I did it for 10 years. Even though being a, a university arguing, I'm probably uh, about to quit. <laughs> so, uh, so which is cool. They had a good run and I had a good run. Like I said, I'm black and I did operations for security and programming and design as part of ops. And, and that's what I feel like when I do security. I'm sneaking in. I'm checking your around. I'm checking your operations. I'm snooping around from like black ops, you know, like from a military. I'm checking your encryption, your memory, right? I'm doing a little uh, red team. I'm attack your site, see what's going on. So that's how I kind of came up with my name. Um, and two is you just don't see a lot of black guys in IT. So I wanted to highlight that. Man. I'm an OG and I want to put that out there. So there's no confusion. So I'm a little different. I tell people I'm, I'm, I'm smart, but not very bright. <laughs> There's two different things. So that's how I came up with that. Um, the proper claims for research and experiment uh, uh, credit generally involves failure to participate in or substance qualify research activities and or satisfying requirements related to qualified research. So people are talking about they're doing research and development and not doing it and try to take a tax uh, rebate for that. All right. The proper monetized installment sales. Promoters find taxpayers seeking to defer recognition of gain upon sales of appreciated assets and organize an abusive uh, shelter through selling them monetized installments. The IRS continues to pursue action against promoters of these schemes as well as taxpayers who participate. We're stepping up our enforcement against abusive arrangements. The IRS, the IRS Commissioner Chuck, don't be lulled into shady deals. The IRS recommends that anyone who participates in one of these abusive Arrangements should, occult, should consult an independent counsel about coming into compliance, right? So um, just some deals we know are, you that you know are shady when you talk to people. Right? Uh, what these machines are going to do is uh, cray good and bad. Wars will definitely shift. Let's boost on the ground. Uh, if you don't know Helmet, <laughs> that's been that way for the last 10 years. There's been cyber wars for the last decade, right? So the question is, is... Um, what would make the United States put boots on the ground, right? People don't know when Sony got attacked and they came in and stole all their, their uh, intellectual property, um, the United States portion of that, uh, the United States was thinking about putting boots on the ground. So what a colonial pipeline, right? They shut down uh, half of the East Coast gas. You saw some people putting gas in trash bags. Uh, I was confused about that, people putting trash in gas bags. So that's happening right now, Helmut. So we, the United States is trying to figure out, okay, what what is crossing the lines where somebody do a cyber attack and we put boots on ground, right? Um, the Colonial Pipeline, I think, was close, right? Because if it was winter, winter, and people couldn't get gas and heating oil and all that was shut down in the winter, um, I believe they're gonna somebody's going to attack the United States and shut half the country electricity off, right? I think that's enough to put boots on ground. Right. So I think they're trying to figure that out. And uh, all the administrations talked about it at a high level. What 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 is it going to take for us to put boots on the ground? Same as Amazon warehouse workers are next to machines. Oh, yeah. Two is if you if you Google Kiva robots, uh, a lot of those are the core of the warehouse are just they look like Romba robots. 
and the shells come to the Packers. You don't send people pick. So at night, people uh, fill the uh, the shelves up, and the shelves come to the Packers, right? And they don't put everything on the same shelf. They put what you usually order together, right? So if you order uh, hot dogs, they got buns on there, mustard, hot mayo, right? So when that shell come, they got an eighty percent of chance of picking everything you need for that order you have off a couple of shelves, right? So if you do Kiva, uh, Amazon actually bought Kiva Robot, so that's coming. Shout out to Before the Billions. Everybody go out and subscribe to him. He's making big moves. I know he's trying to get his hours. I'm close to my hours. <laughs> Shout out to Before the Billions. I went on one day at 10 o'clock and almost died. I I, I went no good for uh, two days. I, I went on at 10 p.m. Shout out to Gabe came up. We talked to one. I was like, yeah, I'm too old. I can't be Before the Billions. I got to set my stuff at, up at three. Shout out to before the bill. <laughs> um, that car would be programmed to protect the passengers. That decision is definitely deep. True. No, that's true, right? But as a society, though, are we going to, we probably going to have rules uh, that all the cars got to buy, 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 right? So if the kid is six and you 70, are the rules going to be different if the kid is, if the person jumped out in front of the car, if they're a kid at six and the passenger 70, if those are flipped, what if the person jumped out of the, fell out as 90 and the kid six? Are the same rules going to be different? Right. So that's some of the things we got to think about too, Helmet, is uh, uh, from, from that. Right. But I'm like, if it's my car, I want it to protect me. Right. But there can be uh, rules, regulation, and laws, right, to tell the car companies how to program. I'm like, say the kid, Andy. <laughs> it's a, it's not mutually exclusive. Before they, say the kid and me, right? The cool thing though is, I think technology is getting so much better where the car can actually do that, right? I think brakes are getting better. I think cars, when it thinks it's gonna hit, I think they're gonna put the car in reverse so you can actually stop it with inches. So I think before the billions is on some, but there's gonna be a certain part where the car is gonna have to make a decision, right? And we're gonna have to program it, right? <laughs> Shout out to I agree with for the big let's save everybody. <laughs> so uh, but yeah, but if you ever go back to iRobot, that was one of the decisions why and Will was having nightmares, right? The kid was way down in the uh I think the lake, and he was up there, and the robot was like, Oh, you got a 70% chance, but the kids got a I mean, it was like 28 or something super low. So the robot saved Will, right? Because the robot did how it was programmed, right? So that's what we got to figure out. Like you said, what are we going to program? I got a piece of time. Oh, cool. Check it. Uh, check out the replay or check out the next stream. Next stream, Jerry. I try to uh, put out a lot. I try to put out a lot. Uh, Salute, Pepper. What's up, game over? So, yeah, so that's one thing. And we'll talk about that more. Like I said, I was going to do more large social things. But, um, and I see, I like to chat thinking. A lot of people never thought about that, right? So when you do autonomous cars, autonomous trucks um there's just gonna be a lot of things where technology can make those those life or death decisions right um um that's gonna start playing in the future right a lot of people don't realize that when you go to the hospital ventilators could be filled up right because of the jab right so nurses take your health your age and other factors to figure out if you get a ventilator right if they fill up right it, it actually happened in england this old lady was like 90 she just basically said, I'm good. I don't live my life, right? So so you got to think, we're doing that now. Y'all just don't know it, right? So so um, like I said, they're making those calculations now. So if a hospital's out of ventilators and you need one and somebody's old, and how are they going to pick who get the ventilator? The cool is um, most um, states and larger cities have enough ventilators to go around, right? But there are certain points when stuff gets real, they got to make those decisions, right? on on your life and who's gonna get them right and sometimes we know people with money be working stuff in the back end right so we we got to stay on top of that to make sure it's equitable and fair across the board right so that's one thing like i said um bigger things i'm gonna talk about my channel channel with technologies and kind of drill down into that and see like um tax filers should be expect delays i just looked out there like i said i was pulling this together today for a quick live stream like i said i do a ton of irs work so Tax uh, season kicked off on kicks off on January 24th. 
Filers should expect delays that the IRS is grappling with last year's backlog, staffing issues, Treasury official says. You may avoid problems by filing electronically with direct deposit and checking your return for errors, uh, especially with stimulus and advanced child tax credit payments. Right. So if the computer can do it right, you can get it, get it in the mail quickly. If not, you know, you, you might be waiting. Right? So once again, we're about to get to the back end part of computers, but just be safe out there with those tax refunds. Make sure you're not giving anybody access to your phone so they can steal your PayPal and your cash app when you move your tax return through your PayPal. Right. So I see a lot of people doing that and using that as their bank account to get to get that refund. Right. So we want to be that. Wow. What are you saying? Makes me rethink of some of my program. Yeah. Uh, nice. And so, I mean, like I said, um, that's something too, when you get into the metaverse too, right. That's going to be a different level of programming, different level of stimuli, but um, we we got to start thinking about that as a as a society. How do we want that to happen? Right? Shout out to before the billions. <laughs> Trash. You got Google that. You didn't see that before the billions. Google it, man. People were putting it in plastic container. Somebody was putting gas in trash bag. I might Google that real quick. It, it was crazy. Um, The new threat, in my the new threats, in my opinion, cyber threats to key infrastructure. Oh yeah, the government's already all over that, right? Because um, that's why I believe the electric grid is gonna be shut down. Um, yeah, they're already on it. Uh, helmet. That is the the best big threat um, model is is um, the electric grid, uh, nuclear power plants. People forget the um, the first attack we did was. Uh, Israel and uh United States did stuck nets, right? Where we actually went in Iran's nuclear power plant. We spent their centrifuges, uh thimbles. The dash said they were good, but we cracked them so they couldn't make uh, nuclear bombs for a while. But once we us and Israel did that, we opened up the floodgates to oh, you can do a ele- ele- uh cyber attacks. Uh we were the first one did it. Now everybody has a cyber attack. Um, division even smaller companies and even the smaller nations are renting them from bigger from bigger nations right so um now you're right uh key infrastructure they just showed you with colonial pipeline when you can shut down gas on one of the coasts to me that's a, that's a key infrastructure so they they know they can do it and they paid them four million dollars off the bat to get it back so they know it's profitable too so infrastructure can change over time yeah we need to harden ours because ours most of our key infrastructure is from the 70s man we still trying to fix highways uh we trying to do smart grids without them being protected most of the nuclear stuff is on the internet that's not protected um so now nah, so yeah that that definitely is uh, a big one um uh helmet Exactly. You got this. Every decision made by our other statistics. The question is priority. Car, human life, the data loaded by algorithm decide facts. See, um, that's true. So that's what we got to figure out is do we want the passenger making that decision, engineering cannabis, the government or the car company, right? Can I put on my car with, with okay, can I make the priority me? <laughs> right? Or, or am I gonna let the car make decision, or is the government gonna put rules on everybody so there be a decision across the um, so that's the interesting part, right? Or then two is um, all right. Like I said, are we gonna make them? When I spoke to Lee Turner, he told me that people' lives are worth differently depending on age. Oh, facts, a hundred, a uh, hundred percent. Uh, let me read this again. When I spoke to Lee Turner, he told me that people' lives are worth differently uh, depending on their age and who de- and who depends on you, right? Uh, the who depends on you is is correct but i work for insurance companies we take your age uh they take your race but they tell you they mix it in with people we that's why they ask you if you smoke they ask you your um your family health history right we roll all of that and give you insurance problem uh policy b b to b the insurance policy really tells you how much you, how much you're worth right if you old and sick your insurance policy is going to be astronomical so we've been doing that already. People just don't realize. I work for an insurance company. We've been predicting death forever, B to B. Salute to Wally. All 
Um, I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. The problem is, is um, I don't know if they, I don't know if the court determines your the worth of your life. They do with your the the sentences you get, right? Right. Depending on the sentence you get, is I believe how it comes up with your life. But for me, that's not a that's not a dollar amount, right? Insurance actually puts a dollar amount on your life. What he's stating, I believe, is if you get thirty to forty years as a certain different demographic, right? That is putting um, a pseudo price on your life. Insurance actually puts a dollar price on your life, right? But I, I can see that. I can definitely see that. Example is destroying a car worth it if the passenger has no criminal record and no job. So the algorithm prize around life and the car worth millions. So that's actually a, a an extended tech that engineering cannabis has on it is. I'm just talking generically from your health part. He's saying now he's adding, which I think is valid, is if you're a criminal, right? The algorithm now, all that data is uh, public information. So I can put that into the decision, right? If you're a criminal and a scumbag, right? I'm just going to run over you with the car, right? So that's true. That's interesting, engineering cannabis. I, I never, I'm going to have to think about that a little more. I'm going to have to think about that a little more because now, like engineering cannabis, I have all this data, right? And usually I have facial recognition. So nine times out of 10, most people, I could say that's you. This is your, you know, your criminal background. So now I could weight that against, you know, the car trying to do some drastic to save you instead of the car running over you, right? Um, that's interesting. I might have to think about that engineering cannabis. Hmm. You mentioned Python. Are you finding young black children being encouraged to learn program more than before? No, <laughs> no, hell man. Um, programming still not cool. Uh, programming, we still talk about the gender war more than we talk about programming. Um, we still, um, um, I just, I think it's gaining a little traction, but not a lot. Um, I'm, we're trying to change that, but I just don't see it. I see it a lot. Will those Oculus uh, goggles be required for the metaverse? Uh, it won't be o Oculus. It'll be different ones. It'll be different ones. I still can't see your comments in the chat. Um, I might have to check that out before the billion. Let's see what's going on with that. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Uh, give me one second, everybody. Um, I got to pick up this phone call. I think work is looking for me. my fault i'm back um but yeah so that uh that's gonna be uh for had to miss nash that was that kind of threw me off guard i, I love the movie <laughs> shout out to my man just passed away he, he did an excellent third grade marshal engineering uh the interesting i thought I was, that's interesting i hadn't thought to say to, of that to say suspect the criminal <laughs> yeah yeah engineering cannabis when you put that on there i start thinking i was like okay let me i, I think that was a national pro progression man because now i can hit you you know I, I can hit you with the drone or the camera i could probably identify who you are within 10 feet right i could figure out who you are facial recognition i could pull up your um your record, then I can add that in the algorithm, right? More criminal record, more, you know. So I don't know, engineer. That had me thinking. I was like, okay, I never thought about that, right? 
But now, right, we we saying your past history, it could be a criminal crime. Now we, you know, adding that against you, right? But that's just a that's just a different thought, engineer cannabis. Um, I thought it was yeah, it had me um like I said, I was just thinking a little different when you brought that up. But, uh, with the, I just crashed the car. Um, did you find some cookies? Got to configure your settings. Shout out to the settings. I thought I had them configured, B2B. I might have you help me, man. I'm still struggle streaming, man. I went from struggle to barely. <laughs> so I'm making progress, B2B, man. I'm making B2B. Instead of risking other citizens' lives by engaging in a gunfight, one life versus money and damage to property and life. Yeah, I, I think that's going to start coming into play. Um, I think that do that now, <laughs> really, right? I think um, men are generally more dangerous than women, right? So I think the in their mind, they're making that decision where, you know, if I see somebody 6'4", 350, you know, that's a, that's going to be ser- something. I'm going to move differently, right? So I think they're doing that subconsciously, Helmet, right? When you, when you deal with people, uh, chases and stuff. By the way, Apple coming out with their own fact. What do you think about Swift being more on, more in demand coming up? I had to do some research on that. I heard Swift, but then it kind of disappeared. And I think uh, Argo and Russ kind of overtook Swift. But like I said, I need to do a little more research on that. Snuggles in the house, the big troublemaker. Nah, I like she's all she's good with me. I'm dropping the link, Snuggles. I'm dropping the link. I'm gonna drop the link. <laughs> uh, yeah, Walmart hires broken up another problem than kicking the fucking Walmart. The uh, best police, so Walmart can benefit from above and beyond. That's true. The weird thing people don't realize if you Google is Walmart was taking insurance policies out on people. On some of their employees, so people were trying to figure out if that was appropriate or not. Right. So um, so I think doing it for a key employee, but they were taking um insurance policies out on regular employees, man. So it's kind of like, okay, what are you doing to calculate who you should be taking um insurance policies out on, right? So Yes, we study wrongful death to tort the value and life of a middle age wage earner is higher than the value of a life of an instant. Facts. Okay. True, true. Because the uh, wage earners add, adding to the economics. Right? But if I think you talk to a lot of families, right? The families would say the baby's more important most of the time, right? And like I said, from an um, insurance company, um, the baby's life, right, is going to be more valuable because it has a mo- longer time to live and pay premiums, right? So, but I never thought about that from a tort perspective. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by metrics to unlock your car, saving your drive, uh, saving your driving style routes, music, everything, so you'd be trapped if you get hacked. <laughs> now that's true. Usually they have the get out of jail uh, button underneath helmet, so if. I- so if all the power went out or something, they usually have a button or something you can turn it up that'll open up the door and can pop it out, right? Because as part of that, because I do a lot of, they call it uh, business continuity and disaster recovery. You kind of build that in the car, right? If all the power comes out and you can't get out, right? You, you probably can kick the window out a little easier helmet. They usually build that into the car, right? So, um, so if you look on the screen, publication 1075, tax information security guidelines for federal, state, and local. I do a lot of this. Basically, it's how do you secure a computer in an environment on-prem or in cloud, right? This tells you what you need to do to um, to lock it down to get. It's called FTI, Federal Tax Information, right? I do a ton of work in that. So this gives you the guidelines, hopefully, so your, your tax information doesn't get stolen. And the other part of this is they call them schisms. These are actually the uh, one checks on systems you would do to make sure it was locked down. And we'll read, we'll read a couple of, of these in a minute, but let's see. The chat is hot. <laughs> I'll put the link at the bottom. Let me see. Their commercial commentaries, man, as I, <laughs> I know, I, I agree. I just don't think I deserve it. 
Adrian, I, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> That's a high level of praise. <laughs> I'm just a simple dude doing IT. When you talk about getting on the Supreme Court, and uh, but, um, like I said, a lady I'm having on um, Friday is actually running for judge in Chicago. So I'm ever talking about that run and, and what does that mean and um, trying to get to those different levels, um, getting people, black people in the management. So, um, so shout out to her. She's going to come in and talk about uh, her running for judge, uh, her uh, campaigning. Um, I'm really, I'm not super political, but I'm probably definitely going to donate to her campaign and probably go up there and, and help her in Chicago. Um, uh, one tech away, everything is quantifiable. Your life can be rated as how important you are to be the economy. The decided your values, AI will determine values you are to. Oh, 100%. 100 percent and that's the thing i think we need to make sure it's on the blockchain so we can double check it man you know they be putting extra <laughs> minuses if you're a person of color color engineer so we just got to make sure that those algorithms are fair and equitable uh, across the board but i i definitely agree with like because when you said that i was like man i never thought about you know in autonomous driving if i hit you with the facial recognition and I could pull up your, you know, your record. Are we taking points off for felonies, right? Because you know we can do that stuff in a millisecond. We can do it as we driving down the street, just in case something happened. You could be hitting people, right? Because when you go through stuff, um, there's FBI uh, warrants. As you go through those toll roads and they're taking pictures of you, you showing up in people's uh, um, uh, ring doorbells, going to the sheriff. They doing facial recognition searches for who who they looking for anyway. So we know we know they're already doing that, right? So that, that's just like I said, that was interesting when you brought that up, <laughs> engineering cannabis. I just went there. I was like, hmm, let's go and take that to the conclusion. Let's go and take that to the conclusion. Good, good, good. What they were referring to? That's oh, facts, facts. No, I agree with you. Like you said, no, that's I I agree with you. That's the link if you want to come up. Like I said, I dropped it in there. Uh AI would also predict how valuable kids would will be by using data like kids, parents, environment, schooling. Oh, facts. What area you grow up in? Because we know that they're gonna take some points off from the area you grow up in. Because a lot of times you could predict. You know, like you said, you could predict where your parents are, your kids, the environment, what school they're doing, what area, especially who you hanging out with, right? All that can go into uh, the uh, Chinese calls, calls it a uh, national citizens report card. Are you a good citizen or a bad citizen? So uh, I think China or Japan is already doing it, right, from a citizen's perspective. So it just be a matter of a time before we start doing it, right? Shout out to Princess A. But uh, so let's read a couple of these. So like when I'm checking on computer systems, shout out to Gabe. Eh? Uh, these are things. Are you running unsupported system components? The agency's maintaining the application servers ensures the application server operating system is supported, right? You don't want anything outdated that's going to get hacked with known vulnerabilities. Uh, fly remediation, verify the application servers or operating system patches are up to date. Least privilege, the minimum amount of administrators application managers developer and auditors and application accounts exist on a machine hosting the uh, application server ensure non-administrations are not allowed uh, access to the directory tree the shell or the operating system functions and utility right? now the least privileged key application service administration configuration tools must only be accessible by application server staff so Long story short, when I do those type of checks on system, it's about 3,000 checks for a small system. Right? So we try to make it secure, trying to make sure it doesn't get hacked. And uh, long story short, uh, Spike Lee, we're trying to do the right thing. <laughs> One of my favorite movies. We're trying to do the right thing, right? So th those are um, things from, once again, protects, protecting you, the taxpayer, in the federal and the state level, right? We want to make sure the computer systems can't get hacked. We want to make sure we let you know the things so you don't get scammed and, and lose your money, right? So those are some of the things we're uh, kind of talking about today. 
Um, like I said, this was something short. I was thinking about the IRS. So I was like, oh, let me look up some of the, the IRS stuff. Like I said, I dropped the link. Um, it's cool, it, it, you know, if you come up or not, it's all good. Like I said, I just want to drop a little IRS knowledge. Once again, we're doing the um, um, access to justice on uh, Friday. I'm um, getting that ready. Um, uh, like I said, um, just kind of going over things that uh, most people use in Zoom to go to court. And also part of that is they're giving tablets so you can get education and uh, why you locked up. So what type of education are, are they giving you? Uh, cash bond versus bond algorithms. Uh, we we'll probably touch on that a little bit uh, tomorrow. The government's uh, put a lot of funding into it. So is that funding reaching the people it should be reaching? Right. Once again, that's my society stuff. Doing a, Like I said, my first one is access to justice. I got a attorney coming on who's running for judge. So I think that'll be some a little different with once again technology of uh, focusing on um just basic really basic technology before we get to the machine learning and cash bells right how can you stay home and do a zoom and be on the court how can a court run a zoom hearing and make sure it's fair and equitable and hopefully cheaper hopefully you don't have to take off work and lose money but those are some of the things like I said we we're definitely going to touch on on Friday. I got it Friday at two Eastern, uh, so that, so that's it. So once again, shout out to uh, Blind Guy, his wife helping me out. Go subscribe to them. <laughs> uh, so that's all I got. Like I said, I want to do something uh, short and quick. Um, shout out to B two B Princess A, Adrian, uh, Nels, Engineering Cannabis, Helmet. Shout out to Snuggles. We keep an eye on her. It's a helmet. Uh, B2B. So, um, and once again, too, is uh, this uh, publication, 1075. If you go on my compliance playlist, I did a video on uh, uh, IRS Pub 1075. Why? I think a compliance is a way to secure the bag in, in IT without having to be super technical. It's called GRC. Uh, governance, risk, and compliance, right? So that's some things I'm, I'm going to get into, too. Um, so if that's it, uh, oh, let's see if there's somebody new. Game over. Let's see. Professor, can the IRS do your, Professor, can the IRS do your taxes for you? If you want add, then let you, if they know you're, you're lying anyway. Uh, IRS. Can the IRS do your taxes for you? The IRS won't do your taxes for you. <laughs> and if you if you will add them, let you if they know you're lying. Um, there's a lot of <laughs> the IRS doesn't do your taxes. There's even a lot of free services that'll do your taxes. I think the IRS assists them, but they won't do your your taxes. They let because they want you to be responsible for it, right? And the government doesn't want to take on that responsibility of being on the hook for doing your taxes, right? So they um, incentivize people to give you a free services by big companies by giving them grants, right? Because when you do people's taxes uh, game over, you take on um, some responsibility so you could be found negligent, right? Now those big companies charge you $30 or you get the car, or that, but you got to think they're doing millions. They're making 10, you know, 50 million, you know, people file taxes. So they're easily making a ton of money. And people forget they do um, individuals, there's corporate filings. If you got a business, that's a filing. So, you know, if you got a K-1 because you're running a, um, a partnership, so there's a ton of money. So, But the IRS doesn't want to take them responsibility. There's a lot of commercial vendors that, uh, that do that for you. Uh, now, granted, now the IRS, because your business, your company you're working for is going to report what they pay you, right? So the algorithm is going to say, okay, that person uh, didn't report what this business is paid to them, right? So either the business overreported because they're trying to get a, a lesser tax bill or you're lying because you don't want to pay more. Right. But then there's other stuff like um, as a business with the lying part is if you said you make X amount of dollars as a restaurant, but I can look at your inventory. If you didn't buy enough product that I think could, ma could match that revenue. Right. I'm a I'm a audit you. Right. Because I, I think you're lying. Right. Because so people don't realize, right, because your business is doing this, right? Okay, if you said you make a million dollars, but you only bought $10,000 worth of product, right? Those numbers don't add up. Or the other way around, right? You bought all this product, but you're reporting a lot less. 
you bought a million pounds of meat but what you sold is a half a pound of product right so then i could figure out if you're cheating right or not so that's how you do uh shout out to uh engineer uh machine learning artifact more machine learning right i can learn for this much product in a restaurant how much you should be making gross right so um so that's how they can catch you lying too so peace off all that friday I was for, oh cool cool like i said i always test the replay but like i said i got it coming on I'm trying to get my uh guest interview um start interviewing more guests so i got that coming on i got three people that own their own businesses that's coming on in tech i got the uh ceo of a, a computer organization comes on he has 600 people working for him for a large state agency uh so I'm trying to get the interviews going again reaching out to my contacts supporting political actors that push our agenda is key a lot happens via let's oh facts 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 it's uh i think we should take it one step further helmet and i'm trying to stay out the political game on my channel we need to form packs right political action committees where you chip in a large same amount because i've actually had lobbyists come and say my name not very nice to my boss <laughs> so lobbyists work Hel helmet a couple of them came into my but my boss office and told them i i didn't know what i was talking about <laughs> so <laughs> So, so I'm familiar with the packs. So, so if folks don't support who they like or others do the same, can't blame. Oh, facts. I'm at 100 percent on that. I agree with you. And like I said, I think we need to uh get better at that, more political savvy at that. Like you said, we just usually think about presidents. There's a lot of you get more done on a local level, really. 100 percent I think you get more done on, on a local level on that. So Let's see, what did I, I think is that all I have for me? Well, I think that's us winding down. Um, I said I dropped the link. Like I said, let's see if y'all got any more questions. Like I said, the um uh access to justice, like I said, is Friday at two. Then we're doing class, uh more AWS class Sunday at three. Uh so we're gonna do that. Um trying to think what else yeah so i think uh probably talk more about programming um i think i get a lot of questions on that so that's more purple team right programming is you do the app you do the database connection web server app server that's really what uh hackers attack first right is what is accessible to the internet right that's really called purple team how do you secure that we just went through some of the schisms check uh, what that really looks like and what those checks uh, look like like i said i told you it's about three thousand of them so <laughs> the, mid, the midterms are about to be here before you know oh facts <laughs> it moves facts it does facts. you are correct <laughs> i appreciate that i appreciate that miss nash i'm trying to uh uh get up there with b2b try and get a little more more professional stop struggle streaming I'm, I'm calling me barely streaming i'm, I'm getting a little better <laughs> each quarter i try to get a little better right like i said i'm dropping my link now so yeah um like i said i so i think thir i know thursday is gonna be fire like i said and uh i'm sure we're gonna get some excellent questions i'm kind of getting my slides ready um biden actually had a uh, access to justice panel about three or four months ago so i'm going through there kind of chopping stuff out of there that, that we're going to talk about and kicking you know? up She's actually talked about where she went into jail and she's seen uh, men, black men with sh uh, shacks on her uh, wrist and on her ankles. She, she said it was just heartbreaking to see a line of dudes and always drunk shoot with their ankle shackles. She said it was she said it was super unbelievable. So I'm sure we're going to chop chop that up about that. Um, um, I've just never I've been to court for a traffic ticket. <laughs> That's about it. I, I'm pretty I have a pretty boring life, right? I've got a couple speeding tickets. Um, that's about it for me. I, I, I like I said, I, I had a few boring life. The cool thing though is when you have a um, a lawyer at your fingertips, because we've been cool forever. You know, one of my best friends, so I always try to sue everybody. She's got to calm me down. I I want to send a letterhead to everybody and sue them, right? But what we talk about that too is having a lawyer in your team. Um, it's a good thing. <laughs> 
it's it's better to have one and not need it than need it and, and need one right so that's saying so we're going to touch on that a little bit so um i think i'm going to wrap it up nobody's coming up i think we knocked out all the questions out and so i, I appreciate everybody uh for supporting me like i said i'm keeping my grind on uh like i said i'm trying to get uh go a little harder keep it up with b2b you know he went uh live for 30 hours straight <laughs> so i'm not doing that but <laughs> shout out to him so I'm trying to go a little harder i always uh shout out to the young people because they they putting in work and i came here to help them so you always gonna check me on and b2b's uh <laughs> chat and i'm always coming up on this stream so um everybody have a nice tuesday oh my god i'm thinking it's thursday i'm struggling everybody have a nice tuesday we're gonna we're gonna make it to friday i'm out thanks for joining me mm.